Hello, hello, hello. So today we're going to be talking about tubing. Now, we all use tubing in everything we do to do with brewing. And even if you've just got a, an air still, you're still going to use a tube for uh, the siphon to rack off um, all the way through to bigger stills or, or bottling, barreling, you name it. A lot of the products you buy, they come with a tube and you just stick with that tube. But what happens when you want to extend the tube, or you want to adapt it and make something a little bit different or better for your needs? What tube to use? Now, half the time people just go to the brewing shop and buy whatever they've got. Uh, they won't really pay much attention to what it is, just more how much it costs. So I thought the perfect idea for this video is to go over the different types of tubing, or at least the main types of tubing that people use. Um, now the first main one is PVC tubing. And this pretty much comes with everything. This was taken off my T500 um, reflux still. And this is the uh, output, yeah, the output hot water for the hot water recording. Um, now the good thing with PVC is that it's cheap. Uh, one meter, you're talking about one pound 20, thereabouts. Um, good things with PVC is obviously it's cheap. You can bend it and move it. The downsides are that, as you can see here, it also can be quite rigid. So if you're siphoning here, as you can see, not that brilliant. And it's now curling and going all over the place. So when you're racking off into a barrel, this can start wandering if you're moving your arms around and, and just, it, it's not great. Uh, it can kink quite easily, so I'm not going to do it because I don't want to damage it, but if you keep twisting it around and around, it'll be a certain point where it just folds in on the corners, goes white, and I'll start damaging it, which isn't great. Um, when it heats up to uh, maybe 50 plus degrees Celsius, it will start becoming very floppy. Now, that could be a good thing, but if you've got a semi-rigid pipe in a certain area, and it's like outputting to your sink, and then suddenly it starts getting wobbly, is it now going to start falling out? So it's not the best of pipes for all things. And the next thing is PTFE. Now you won't be using this in theory on anything apart from distilling. Um, it's rigid, uh, it, it moves, but it springs straight back into place again. Um, it's, it doesn't really stretch. To be honest, it's pretty awful for tubing. Um, now the only reason that we use it is because this is safe for high grade alcohol. Um, most other tubing isn't, so this is why obviously this one comes with a T500, the, the actual um, product condenser for putting the spirit out into your, your vessel, uh, Demijohn or whatever you're using. And it's good, but it's just a bit rigid. Now the next thing that uh, you may or may not be aware of, most people are, silicon. Now silicon tubes, really good because as you can see, it's very floppy. Very, very floppy. This acts a little bit like the PVC tube does when it's warm. Um, and the good thing with PVC is the fact that you can literally put it into very small shapes and it'll just spring back, whereas PVC can't do that. If you actually kink it, and like this, I'm now folding it right over so it's actually really, really nasty shape, it comes straight back in shape again. So this is absolutely ideal for, for bending around to small areas or kinking around things, doing whatever you want to. Downside is this is around about two pounds 50 to eight pounds per meter. Oh, I've got to tell you, this PTFE is around about 15 pounds a meter. It's so very expensive. Yeah, two pounds 50 to eight pounds, depending on where you buy it from. Um, now the big issue with all these three, um, uh, it's called them like plastic rubbery type uh, um, and obviously the PTFE is different, but they need to be food grade if you are working on the actual spirit itself. So for example, if you're using um, to collect spirits, it needs to be food grade to PTFE. You cannot, must not use PVC or silicon. If you're using it to uh, have it as a siphon, then it needs to be food grade and food safe. That sadly will mean it's harder to find um, and also can sometimes be double or triple the price. Because obviously if you walk into your local DIY store and buy some B, um, PVC or silicon, I reckon it's a very, very high chance that will not be food safe. Where, is it then safe for you to then uh, be using it? Well, unfortunately that falls into two or has two separate answers. The first is the fact that food grade or food safe grade is uh, A, being used on machinery that has not been used for other purposes. So it won't be having any uh, dangerous oils or chemicals or residue from anything else, so uh, which are toxic to us. Uh, and the second thing, obviously the ingredients, that the, the, the bits that have made this are also safe. 
So if you do buy something from the hardware store and you put some beer or wine or something through there, what? how do you know that that's not going to leach out any flavors which could be toxic? You don't know, and that is the problem. So only ever buy food grade stuff. If though, you're using this on a uh, product or reflux still uh, or condenser and you're, all you're using it is for just to pass water through it and then hot water out, then yeah, it doesn't need to be food safe because obviously that water will never touch your lips. That is unless obviously you're uh, outputting it to a barrel, you're gonna collect it later. I collect mine and, and put it on the garden. But if you're putting it into a barrel to then use it for something else, which will be for human use then or consumption, no, food grade only. Now the other so that I use is actual rubber. Uh, and this is a fabric um, braided or cotton braided uh, rubber hose. Uh, this has actually been made for fuel so diesel, petrol, paraffins, you name it. Um, and the reason why I use this is this is my output tube for my boiler. So I've put on a barb and um, 10 mil, 12 mil, can't remember what it is now, uh, but thread. So this will then go onto my boiler. This will then go into my uh, sink or whatever I'm outputting my wash or whatever it is to. The reason why I use this rather than these is these are all quite high, uh, or the ones I buy are quite high tolerance for temperature but I don't want the possibility of it wandering. So with this being uh, as thick as it is, I know it's flexible, but once it's in a container, it won't move. And that's why I use this. There's seven, eight pounds a meter, um, so it varies. Next thing, copper. Now, after you've got this in your home, uh, we've got 15 mil, 10 mil, and eight mil. Now, this can be, two to four pounds a meter and uh, depending on the size and also where you buy it from this is really good because it's food safe it's also very safe obviously for uh, collecting distillate from your um, product condenser on your still so absolutely ideal the downside is obviously it's a bit rigid um the good news though is if you're buying this eight mil and this eight mil fits perfectly over the uh, collection container or the collection tube on the t500 you can mend it so this way you can actually bend it not too much, because otherwise you're going to kink like that and you'll destroy it. But you can bend it to the shape, so you can put it on your T500, and then you can rotate and bend it round to then go into your uh, damage on or anything else. So you don't have to use PTFE tube, which you can't really bend or at least get in that in shape. And if you integrate and, and use 10 mil as well, the 8 mil actually fits into the 10 mil. And if you bend them ever so slightly in the opposite directions, they can go in, and when you twist it, it locks. So now you've got a second tube. And you could say, why do I need a second tube? Just get one. Well, yeah. But for example, you can have a tube coming from here to there, which is half a meter, and another one here, which can then sit in. And then you can have a different 10 mil tube for different size jars or demijohns or things like that. And that way you won't be getting the whole thing. Plus you'll then have two smaller tubes, easy to store. Now, how I use them is like here, this is my auto mini siphon that I use and it's got a PVC came with it and it's great the downside is when I'll try to siphon and this tube's dangling like this in a bucket if I move too much it's going to go all over the place uh, I want it to be flat and solid straight down so it stays in that barrel so bin that and then if you then substitute it with this tube and if you notice yellow tags what I always do when I buy tubing is I write on there what it is so this one says uh, six millimeter internal diameter and 10 millimeter outside diameter. And I bought this as like a three or five meter tube. Um, and I've got a big container for so when I need a tube, I can start plugging it all in, seeing which one it is. Go like that, go up. Ah, that's what I need to buy more of. So this one, wrong tube. This one, which is uh, internal nine outside 12, fits on here. Lovely. And as you can see now, that just a straight. So when I'm siphoning and if I'm moving my hand around, it stays pretty much the same place. So I know it's not going to start curling around or anything like that. And it's absolutely ideal. So really useful. And then the other one is this is my bottler. So this has a little uh, a steel um, ball and spring on there. I attach this to my bucket full of beer. When I'm bottling, I will then put this in, push down the needle. It will fill the bottle and I can bring it out again. Um, really lovely bit of kit, but again, while this will be on a tap on my barrel, uh, it, it's, it's fairly good. 
it is just so, so much easier when you have it on a silicon tube because then you just, you've just got a lot more freedom, a lot more movement, and you don't feel quite so much weight from the PVC tube. So again, really, really useful, and it pulls off easily. You don't need to heat them up to then try and push them over and then know you're never going to get it off. So I used to have to keep unscrewing this to then sterilize and clean in here to get to the tube. Um, because once the tube PVC tube is on, you, you don't really take it off. And if you do, you start getting a rippling effect. You've got to cut the ends off after a while because they just keep expanded. Whereas silicon, uh, silicon tubes do not. They're permanently on there. But they come off very easily. So there you have it. Um, I hope that this, this video has helped you. Uh, if you've got any questions, obviously post a comment below. Um, but realistically, uh, have a bit of fun, experiment with tubes. Just make sure that if it's going in any contacts of any, any of your brews that obviously are coming in contact with your mouth, uh, make sure it's food grade. If you're just passing water through it, then that's fine. Uh, also experiment with um, wall thicknesses. Um, silicon is one mil is fine. Uh, sorry, PVC one mil is fine, but for silicon go two mil, um, as that gives it a lot more rigidity. But uh, no. I hope you find this interesting.